Well, they say the squeaky wheel gets the grease. Well, you guys screamed, you said, Bean makes a great trailer, but the average working man can't afford it. They got sick of your screaming and they came out with not only a budget model, this is like 40 to 50% less than their last budget model. And on paper, it just makes no sense. This is a trailer I typically can't get behind, but there's a new piece of technology put on this that's changing the game. Not only does it live simple in the way we want to live, it lives bigger than all of the other beans we've used so far. Up here in the front, you can already see an obvious difference. So instead of that tongue box that you see on most of the bean models, they've switched that out with a tongue platform. Now obviously I think that's to save costs, but what it's also doing is saving weight. So unlike most of the teardrops of this size that at minimum are 1,600 pounds up to about 2,200 pounds, I believe this is coming in about 1,200 pounds. And not only is this saving you weight, it's opening this up for just more storage. So instead of being forced into the capacity of the box, you now have this entire platform to work with width-wise. And you know, all the way up to here, you could stack it without impacting the aero performance of this trailer. You can see over here, I have two large cases stacked on top of each other. This is a weather-sealed fridge, so Isco makes one. ARB, if you're an ARB person, probably twice the price, but they make one too. So you can keep this out here and expose it to the elements. One of the suggestions I'd have is to just extend this tongue platform just a little bit because if they added five to six inches on there, you could put small motorcycles. Let me show you one other thing. Remember that propane issue I talked about on the bean stalker and saying how hard it was to bring it in and out? Either these guys took our feedback really quickly or they were one step ahead of me. They've designed this new one in and out and it's just one snap here and one snap here. Coming back to this side of the trailer, this is kind of where it all happens. So right here below the door, I'm going to take off this cover, engage these locks, and there is a actual key lock, and then this nice roller is going to slide this out. And then on this edge are some T's. I'm just gonna put them into the T slots. I have two choices. I can put them up top here to get a higher table or put them down low. So here, just like the bean squared, you have options. So if you want to do dual sinks to do your dishes, you have that. You can throw in one cutting board. Uh, like yesterday, we were filleting fish, so we used this entire thing. We also keep this in and just use it as a storage area while prepping other food. So this is a large surface, so I wanna show you it from both sides. So this is one of the first things besides the platform that I really loved about this, even maybe over my standard galley kitchen, and that's just how much space this has. So I said showing you both sides. So. To give you some perspective, this is 20 trash bags, a box, to just show you how large this space is. So I'm working over here prepping food, May's over here with me, the kids are kind of hanging out on the end. This functions more like an island and it gives us more opportunities. The galley, I never thought of this till I was using this. I only get one place to look in the galley and that is into my cupboards. With this, I can be anywhere I want. If this is the view, I'm looking out there. If the sun's in my eyes or whatever, I can keep rotating around this. In my standard galley, I don't have very many options. And then I also have the option here of a discata as well. And like I mentioned in a previous video, because the camper has to be leveled, once it's leveled, this discata is automatically leveled, so it's as quick as just putting in the propane. Now, I bet in that last shot, you saw that big, beautiful window back there, and you thought, man, that has no galley. And Drew hates these galley-less kitchens, and you'd be absolutely right. But it's that new technology I was talking about earlier that makes it work for this, makes it work for slide-out kitchens, makes it work for a lot of campers that I really wasn't a believer in. So before showing you that, I wanna show you one more item that replaces the galley.
When I take you inside the camper, you're going to see no storage space was sacrificed inside. If anything, it actually grew. But outside, you've lost your entire kitchen. So what's the workaround? Well, the first solution before the big one I'm about to show you is this kitchen bag. So this is pretty much everything that was in my original galley for plates and cutlery and everything cookware. And I'm just going to place it up on this hook that they've mounted here. And it's just gonna hang out here as I do my work. Okay, Drew, so what's the big secret? What is this technology that's going to change everything? Well, you know I don't like a camper without a galley because that means I have no coverage with the galley hatch. And you know I don't like an awning. They're ridiculously tough in the wind, putting them up, taking them down. If it rains the night before you leave, you're now stuffing back a wet awning and you have to pull it out later. And the stuff sacks are just a pain. But then comes this. I set it up, I do my dishes, I am ready to go and hit the road again and unlike an awning that I have to stuff back into the sack and I have to dry out, it came back in as quick as I pulled it out. The wind was just ripping through here last night so I just took this big old awning and folded it really fast on top of itself, put the Velcro up and then just jumped back in the trailer. So that's what this ugly mess is. Yes, this has poles and tie downs and you can make this secure but that is not how I would use this. It's coming out when I need it and it's going back when I don't. Now, you're gonna say this awning's gotta be expensive and it's crazy. This is like 850 to 1000 dollars. But think about it, if you buy a budget trailer with some sort of slide out kitchen or something like this at $15,000, for $1,000 extra, you now have a camper that can do it all. Everything our last campers can do and more, wait till you get inside this, for only $16,000 at base. So if you want to know more about this awning, here's the name, I'll put a link in the description. But for those of you with trailers that require 270 awnings and require a lot of guidelines and stakes and time and sometimes you just want something quick, you can move your old awning back to the other side, pick this up and now you have an instant deployable awning and instant pack away awning. I think to me, that's pretty priceless. So now you're under this nice covered awning that's set up instantly. You've put up this table that took what you saw, probably 20 seconds. And now I've put out my propane stove here. And then I have a second cooking source, which is the discada over there. I have this big island to work around. And now I have this jerry can mount that goes right behind this. So I put in my Lifesaver jerry can in here, connected the hose, pressurized it. You can do your dishes with this. We wash off our feet before getting into the cabin. It's our hand washing station. And what this did is it helped us eliminate one extra table. We used to have this table that carried our water and was our hand washing, and now everything's here in one place. Now we had a picnic table at site, but this, as you can see, like with the flat surface, this is big enough if I put in the other cutting board to be a family eating area as well. So you can prep on it, cook on it, use it as the water area, and then this is also your dining table. So you're leaving a lot at home with this more simple model. What did you say about cooking and getting water? So this right here, is allowing me to leave another piece of gear at home. Actually like three or four pieces of gear. So the rear stabilizers, I've never really utilized them. Uh, I don't need them actually, because we're usually hooked up to our tow vehicle. There's not a whole lot of movement when you're just sleeping. We don't walk around in a teardrop. But what I have never used these for is leveling the trailer. But what I'm finding is I can go in really uneven terrain, jack up one side of the trailer to the point where the tire's actually coming off the ground and not having to have my ball leveler with me and those chocks and it's so easy. You just pull this pin and this is just going to rotate down. You've also got another jerry can mount on this side of the trailer. And then these nice square fenders, they're bolted through, but they, they definitely have a lot more movement than their other ones. I would typically jump up on these, but I'm kind of afraid to on this one. Like any of their trailers, this does come with a nice max air fan up top, but 
because this is a true one piece, so when you have a galley on a fiberglass trailer like this, you essentially have a two piece trailer. So there's a seam. Because there's no galley here, there's no seams. This is a true one piece fiberglass shell. So I think it'd be nice if they offered this without a fan, and I'm not sure they do that, or move that fan to somewhere where it's more of a vertical surface or maybe even something under the trailer. You also have a two inch receiver here, and on a trailer that doesn't have a galley, I think this is doubly important because it's going to allow you to carry more gear. So you can add a tray here. You, if you don't like that kitchen for some reason, you could add one of those swing out kitchens you see at the Overland Expo event. So picture this as a tailgating trailer at a football game. You have the discada, the table, and your propane over there and running a stove. And then you have this whole other slide out kitchen here or just carrying bikes. I wouldn't suggest it if you're doing this full time or all summer because of the forces that they're succumbed to back here. They belong in the front and that's the beauty of that tray. But if you're only taking your bikes out a few times a year, I think this would be a decent spot for them as well. Look at this huge window. And you would think because this is a pared down model, it's not going to offer inside what the others do. But honestly, I know Mark, you're probably not going to like this, but this lives bigger than the Black Bean. In my opinion, it lives better than the Black Bean for our family and our current situation. This fits our family so well. Welcome to my new Zen home. As the boys continue to grow, you guys keep asking us, are you gonna outgrow your teardrop? And the answer is no. I can still fit in any bean, but this bean teardrop definitely outlives the other ones in terms of interior space. And it's not just space, like look around, look how clean the lines are. This big Arctic turn window, this big window in the back bringing in, it just feels really open. Now the bed, as you probably are aware, is the same length as all the other beans. But the space inside is bigger because the trailer stayed the same length. But what they did is they removed the galley and that galley space just came into the interior. So when I'm laying back here, I have just my visual forward is not only bigger, but there's actually more space to store things as well. I'm going to start off with these dual pane acrylic windows. So these are Arctic turns, the top of the line. And why we're going to start there is they take up a majority of the space. So if you're not familiar with them, they open up really neat in that you can open them almost all the way up and allow it to rain at night and the rain doesn't come back in. The feature many people like, you can catch it on the front edge here and get just enough airflow in to stop condensation, but not too much that it's making the camper cold at night. You have a complete blackout screen. You have um, a bug screen. So they're very multi-use. I'm having trouble getting the tripod in here, but you can see I didn't pull this up all the way and that's because of an issue we're going to talk about later. Something in their design that I think can be improved, but it goes all the way up to here and it goes about the width of the trailer. So you can see this one's big, this one is even larger. So this section back here, I can tell this is going to be my favorite part of the trailer once Bean gets it right. And so what this is, this is a platform where you can stow everything. It's huge. It's really deep. I, I don't know if you can tell. It's the depth of the original galley and cabinets. The second feature of this is this is a bunk bed essentially. And they have these back pillows from the front. You bring these here and your child can sleep up here in theory. <laughs> uh, so as you can tell, we have a couple of issues. It's not very big with these. Um, with these down, I can fit up here, but it is extremely tight. Um, let me get up here. So you can see I don't have much room. The depth of it is also causing the child sleeping here to go into this window and ruin this curtain and it's hard to fit. And East pillow kept sliding off. So for one of the first suggestions, this is going to need to come out deeper. And I don't think that's an issue. It can either be some sort of fold out thing, slide out, or even just stationary. Because normally when you sleep in a teardrop trailer, this is overriding your feet anyway. So I don't find it any issue to bring that further out. And then either this needs to come down or this window needs to come up. And I don't wanna go down with it cause I'll show you what's below it next. And I just love this space. It's huge and it's functional. Sarah the three horned. The 
dreaded sharp teeth hunted their fellow. So drawers are important to us, as you know. These drawers are held in with a latch during transit. This is a pretty shallow drawer to allow bigger items under here that I'll show you. And then this one is a really deep drawer. And originally you had to split this with your kitchen storage, but now that you're storing, or I would be storing my kitchen items in the front boxes, now all this is just for indoor. So like I said, you're not losing in the indoor space, you're probably gaining because you also have this cubby up here as well. On this side, we have our power station. And so that's another way that they kept the price down on this. You stick in your own Jackery or EcoFlow or your Yeti Goal Zero, and it plugs into this. And so it's really neat the way they've designed it. It has a charge controller. So when you're running solar, it's going to be charging this and keeping it maintained. When you're plugged into shore power at the campsite or your house, it will charge this while at the same time allowing pass through so all your devices can be used and one of the beauties of this box is that you can take this like let's say you have a storage unit and there's no way to plug your camper in there so you can pull this out after every use charge it at home bring it back in and now you're topped off so let's talk about some of those things I didn't like uh, one of them was pretty obvious pretty quickly and I'm used to having that galley light that nice clean light in the back of a bean and I get to see my food as I'm prepping it as I'm cooking it and it not only helps me see it actually makes the food just look more more appealing. This has this warm amber style light. So one of the suggestions I have is either adding some sort of cooking light there or Bean doing some research and just knowing good clip-on lights that have a good color spectrum for making your food easy to see and tasty. So at the time of making this video, I don't think they have a specific Descada mount for this trailer. And so that meant the Descada had to go under the bed and in the car and it was a little awkward. So I'd love to see them make some sort of cover for the Descada and then like a vertical mount on the edge of the tray. This one is both a pro and a con and that's pricing. Bean trailers are definitely not made with my family in mind. I'd say their target audience is overlanders and that work hard, play hard crowd. Because of this, I find the standard items on this camper aren't necessarily what I would choose. So for the overlanders, for example, this comes standard with 2000 HD Timberin independent suspension. That's incredible for a trailer in this price range but I don't need that kind of suspension to go wherever I need to go. Same with the power station. With a pared down budget trailer like this, I wouldn't expect them to include it. Their competitors sure don't, but at the same time, I would expect a prep table. However, the table is an add-on option. So for someone like me who already owns a power station and does just fine with a torsion axle, I wish the table was standard. But again, this trailer isn't built for me. It's built for the minimalist off-roader or the overlander with a lighter tow vehicle like a Subaru. And he probably already has a nice slide out kitchen in his overland rig. So you can get two doors in this model, that's an upgrade. And I typically would say, yes, that's needed. But in this one, it just feels so open and airy. I feel that one door is enough. On the left, I'll have a playlist of our budget affordable trailers. And then on the right here, I just have a couple fiberglass videos just to help you understand what's a fiberglass trailer, what's a budget trailer, what's the marriage between the two of those and how will that benefit me? But as usual, stay safe on the road and we'll see you in the next episode.